Galaxy 666 by Pell Toro. Session 71. Welcome back to Galaxy 666, your faithful guide to here. Pell is sending us out in high fashion. Like the climax of a fireworks display, he is pulling out all the stops and giving us his best. In fact, this final session contains samples of almost everything Pell that we saw in the rest of the novel. He begins with his trademark listing, providing us with a cataclysmic spew of contrast to define, though not describe, Galaxy 666. It isn't even so much that he does this, as he does this for so long. The greatest line, perhaps of all the book, ends Oski's rant. This is a playful galaxy, and we are the toys with which it plays. What can one say? Fantastic. After the listing, we have a great example of Pell's writing cop-out. The ship itself was performing the most fantastic set of movements and motions that could ever be imagined and could scarcely be described. So he won't bother trying. He does, in fact, give it a go a few paragraphs along, and if we get nothing else out of it, we do understand that the ship is out of control and rapidly changing directions. But wait, if the universe is supposedly throwing the ship in random and nonsensical directions, are not Bronit's random and nonsensical inputs supposed to counter this effect and allow the ship to travel smoothly out of the galaxy? Once again, all of our heroes, with the exception of Bronit, go unconscious at the same time, and regain consciousness at the same time. We get another good helping of thesaurusizing as Pell describes the dancing, sliding, gliding, skating, maneuvering of the ship. And then, in another classic Lionel Fanthorpe maneuver, the book is ended and resolved in a matter of a few sentences. To quote from Albatross Pie, a short letter from Lionel and Patricia that appears in Debbie Cross's book, Down the Badger Hole, Lionel and Patricia explain, quote, what of the audio type gang would ring and say, Do you know that the last reel made 29 pages, so we're on page 154 already? A standard badger length was 158 pages. It meant I had heroes on the far side of the galaxy to crippled ships surrounded by hideous aggressive aliens and three pages in which to bring them home. This accounted for more than a few of the infamous with a single bound he was free endings, including my own favorite, the Flaz Gaz Heat Ray. Unquote. The Flaz Gas Heat Ray, which does exactly what you would expect, appears with no mention of it earlier in the book, within the last 750 words. The heroes simply extract it from a box and wipe out the aliens. The name has become a buzzword for a last-minute, non-sequitur, miraculous, game-saving action, usually along the lines of, Well, that's about it, unless you got a Flaz Gas shoved down your pants. In Galaxy 666, we reach the end in a classic, fitting, Badger Book fashion. Bronit had solved the problem of the apocryphal galaxy, but the strange, enigmatical nexus between Korzak and Ishklaw remained as enigmatical as ever. The one area least explored or developed the nexus between Korzak and Ishklaw is Pell's parting remark. But really, can it be anything more than just one more chance for Pell to use the word enigmatical. And then that's it. So here we are, survivors of what some have labeled the worst novel ever published. But now we know how untrue that is. If you really believed it was the worst novel ever published, why did you just spend the last eight months listening to a weekly podcast of it? At times it was humorous, at times ridiculous, but always it has been fun to share. Before a final farewell, two more things. The first is that Galaxy 666 is not alone. All of Lionel and Patricia's Badger books contain the same sort of puns, lists, confusion, and fun of 666, and I encourage you to go forth and explore them as well. Orion Publishing's site, sfgateway.com, has them waiting for you. If you are still hesitant to take that plunge, check out Down the Badger Hole by Debbie Cross. It is a great entry into the strange relic of the early space race. Second, don't forget to separate the author, Pell, from the writer, Fanthorpe. Robert Lionel and Patricia Fanthorpe have gone on to do many other fun, thought-provoking, and exceptionally worthy projects, from more conventional novels like his Daryl Warther trilogy and their theological works, to television and radio programs. The Fanthorpes continue to add to their list of achievements every day, as we all do. I would like to thank all of you for coming along on our journey through synonyms, 
character malaise, random thoughts, and endless pontifications, and hope that you too found it worthwhile. You are always welcome back, but just remember, small doses, always small doses. I would also like to thank Darren Nash and the team at Orion Publishing for permitting me to use Galaxy 666 and create this podcast. But most of all, I wish to thank Lionel and Patricia Fanthorpe, not only for granting me the permission to do the podcast, but also for writing Galaxy 666 and all the other Badger publications in the first place. Their creative feat is mind-boggling in both scope and scale. I cannot imagine writing and publishing a book every 12 days for a period of three years while holding down another full-time job. But more than that, Lionel and Patricia have left behind a legacy of fantastically funny books to explore, deride, and delight in and have made our lives richer for it. Their attitude in all of this has always been one of quiet forbearance and grace. Certainly, if for no other reason, due to that, they should be an example to us all. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you Lionel and Patricia for Galaxy 666. This is your faithful guide, Tug, bidding you a fond farewell. If you ever need me, you'll find me here in Galaxy 666. And follow Follow, 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 follow. Here ends session seventy one. This is a playful galaxy, he sobbed, and we are the toys with which it plays. <laughs> Right.